Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, welcoming today Steve Lausch, Director of Product Marketing with One Cause, Managing Director of Indie Tech Gives. Hey, welcome, Steve. Hey, Julia. It is so good to be here with you. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to talk to you because you have really come up with and you manage a really interesting um I don't want to use the word campaign, but a program and a project sure. that I think a lot of folks around the country could be looking at for their own communities. And so this is going to be a really fun conversation. Um, I also witnessed to you in the green room that one of my most disastrous interviews in five years and 1100 shows of doing <laughs> the uh, nonprofit show was with your CEO, Steve Johns, and he let me off the hook. He was just lovely. We had some technical problems. We had some location problems. It rained mi misery during that 30 minutes, but he was lovely. And so one cause always showed up, has shown up for me when I needed them. So I'm really, really thrilled you're here. Hey, I want to make sure that I give a, a shout out to all of our presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Fundraisers Friday, which is a new program for us on Friday, just dedicated to fundraising, and then 180 Management Group. These are the folks that join us day in and day out and really support the work that we do here so that we can get guests on like Steve Lausch. Okay, Steve, great logo. First and foremost, Indie Tech Gives. Tell us what you do and what what this whole system is. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, thank you for having me, Julia. I love talking about this. Um, I'm going to do a little storytelling, maybe to, yeah. to answer your question, if that's yeah. okay. But I want to take your audience back to 2019. It would have been early 2019. And I'm guessing many, perhaps most, know that the company that I'm associated with, One Cause, uh, delivers powerful fundraising solutions for nonprofits. That's what we do. Back in 2019, we asked ourselves a question, and so many good things always start with a question. And the question we asked was, what might happen if we were to give our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising software, so we do everything from events and text to give, online fundraising, but we also do peer-to-peer. -peer. Mm -hmm. What would happen if we were to give our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising software a way to local Indiana businesses. Now I'm, I'm from North side of Indianapolis. So when you hear the word Indie tech gives, it's kind of that, that uh, shortened way of saying Indianapolis. So for the benefit of everyone, yeah. what if, what if we were to give that our software away at no cost so that those businesses and many of them are, are startups early to mid scale ups. Some of them are big. Um, one of your, Partners, I believe, uh, was involved this year. Civic Champs, we loved having mm -hmm. Civic Champs. Uh, but what what would happen if we equipped them to raise funds for a nonprofit of not our choice, but their <laughs> choice, their individual choice. businesses? And what if we were to give that software away at no cost to them? What could happen? And I'll tell you, Julia, we kind of we kind of wrestled through this, and we kind of went through a couple problem scenarios, like. Are they going to know how to use it? Not everyone has that natural fundraising know-how. And so we really rallied around that. And we said, what if, okay, okay. What if we at One Cause actually build a fundraising program? So I love your use of that term. I use it all the time. What if we build the program for these businesses? So we do all the heavy lifting. We take care of all that. And it's easy for any business to kind of plug and play, launch this with their employees. Mm -hmm. And then let's go the extra step because we got some amazing people on, on uh, our staff at One Cause. What if we turn some of them loose? They love fundraising. What if we yeah. turn them loose, kind of yoke them up with these businesses mm -hmm. and connected them as a weekly consultant, offering guidance, offering strategy, and ensuring that this campaign would not be something that they just did, mm -hmm. but they had the potential of really rocking out for their uh, employee base, and then ultimately for the benefit of that nonprofit. So in 2019, we created Indie Tech Gives, and it ended up be has become this five-week social giving program, social giving campaign. 
that brings together members of uh, Indianapolis's thriving tech community. We really focus on these, these tech companies, much like One Cause, yeah. but it practically supports the nonprofits that are making a difference and a nonprofit that really makes a difference for that business that wants to support it. You know, I love this concept because I can imagine that you all, um, from your vantage point, you're learning, you're seeing what's going on. Um, and then, of course, you see what's going on in context of the pandemic because you start in 2019. And then, wow, yeah. you know, right place at the right time in many ways because the digital nature of fundraising yes. gets propelled because we can't gather, right? I mean, talk to us a little bit about that um, Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that question because 2019 came off without a hitch. I mean, we <laughs> we only had four businesses. One of them was One Cox. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had a, a, like a, an automotive marketing company join us. Um, we, we had a couple other companies join us and we raised, get this, Julia, a first shot. We raised over 50,000, I think it was like $52,000 between those four companies for four nonprofits. And, and these are nonprofits that like people knew, like Riley Children's Hospital here is just so well known. It's a Children's Miracle Network Hospital, um, Cancer Support Community, the Indiana chapter, United right. Way of Central Indiana, great nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Kicked it off, all the planning in early 2020, getting to your, your, your point, your question. <laughs> And we were ready to go. And I was about ready to turn the key and push the button that early. And, and then March 16th or whatever it was happened, mm -hmm. we said, we can't do this. Yeah. People don't know where North is on the compass. Right. And we need to rethink this. So I called everybody up and I said, cause we had, I don't know how many businesses we had that year. We had grown. Yeah. I said, guys, we can't, it'd be tone deaf. Mm -hmm. And they kind of all said, okay. And before you knew it, probably two, three weeks later, I'm starting to get pinged. Steve, we have to do this. This is exactly what we need. We need something to bring us back into community to have our, our distributed employees that are now, you know, whether you're across town or across the country, mm -hmm. we, we miss each other. We need to engage. We need to do good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're all familiar with what happened that year and how the virtual engagement that you just spoke to exploded mm -hmm. and it was so beautiful and it was so perfect mm -hmm. so we made it through we had a slightly different campaign that year but we made it through and we came back with a vengeance in 2021 i think we raised over ninety thousand dollars that year alone mm -hmm. and uh, it was just fantastic you know it's such an interesting lesson about leaning in and trying to um determine and i'm going to use the word appropriate like what's appropriate you use the word tone deaf what's going to make sense and how do we navigate this but um what a, a phenomenal lesson for for everybody involved and for you and your team um i'm fascinated too that this came at a time when they're probably the majority of the folks that you are engaging with didn't really have the digital component of fundraising and engagement on their radar because everything had been done in person. So, yeah. you know, it, when you look back at this, um, pretty interesting time to, to really have things in place and, and uh, demonstrate with confidence and, and with ease about how this type of a thing can work. Yes. And, and, you know, I'm so grateful to be in this sector. And I'm so grateful to be on the software side of it. And yeah. just knowing that what we do through our, you know, the partnership of amazing nonprofits really does make a difference. And that was the key. And it was the key in 19 and it was the key in 20. And it, and you're so right. We just reinvented each year and we've now over six years, we just finished our 24 campaign over six years. We've had 30 different businesses participate and we've just crested $325,000 that has meaningfully impacted Central Indiana nonprofits mm -hmm. that would not have happened apart from well over a thousand tech professionals orchestrated together with their businesses in this program. And this mm -hmm. is just a side gig, right? I mean, that's what's right. so cool about it. <laughs> I love this is just a side gig. <laughs> so let's dig in a little bit because it's surprising to hear 
and to learn. This is a four week program. So this is really, um, you know, down and dirty and really escalated for a short period of time. Talk about what that donor experience is and, and how does that go? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that question because we have to convince, in a sense, convince some CMOs or VPs of talent, or sometimes even in these smaller uh, startup or early scale up companies, we're talking with the CEO. Yeah. And we're sharing how this is all going to go down, how you're going to be supported, no cost to you. And they love the idea, but like, how are we going to get this off the ground? Mm -hmm. And that's where, without making too much of a plug, that's where the beauty of the, of the software helps make that so easy, mm -hmm. so natural. And so what I would answer your question is, is really that engagement happens. Well, it happens with a business mm -hmm. and it happens with a nonprofit, but it has to happen with a business first, right? And it has sure. to start at the employee level. So most of these businesses, we get them all set up. We give them social promotion graphics. We give them all the information that we need. Uh, they need to have a, a great program. It starts with a kickoff that might include a happy hour or a pizza party or something where everybody comes together and it's that first spark of excitement. And the, the, the software really truly does roll out a red carpet mm -hmm. to every employee, inviting them to make a real practical lasting difference. And I, I think that's why this program works mm -hmm. because employers are learning if they haven't known already for a number of years that we're not just hiring people to do work. We're not just hiring bodies to fill a seat. Mm -hmm. Today's, especially young professionals want to know what do you stand for as a yeah. company and what is your mission? What are your values? And yeah. so, the, the way that they can engage with the software, Julia, allows them to express their own reason for why they're supporting this nonprofit. Yeah. Of course, it shows the giving th thermometer, but it also shows their own images, their own videos, their families, their pets. And it's all, in fact, your guests could go to it today. We still have the 2024 campaign up. Right. Yeah, they could even donate if they wanted. But yeah. www.indytechgives.com. And you can see just how it sets up a very natural way to engage. And yeah. that employee engagement just rolls right into this trip because it's peer to peer, right? Rolls mm -hmm. into this uh, team and company level engagement where we've seen people shaving their heads, you know, <laughs> to, get, uh, to get to grow donations. Oh, I tell you, this one guy, he was so smart. It was the first year down on Monument Circle in India, center of yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. And a connection. This guy has like, I won't embarrass him by saying his name, but like beautiful, long, curly <laughs> locks of hair. And he goes to a certain salon because he knows that that, you know, that the stylist is going to style his hair perfectly every yeah. time. Mm -hmm. He hired her and said, you'll get the exposure. Mm -hmm. I will have you on video. This was actually covered by Inside Indiana with like one of the major uh, business pundits in the city. And he shaved his head. And I think that guy raised $10,000 or more alone that year. I love it. Well, you bring up something that's interesting. And we talk about building engagement. I noticed going through the site and looking at it and, and, and going into the individual um, partners that you had. And, and these are my words, not your words, but it seemed like there was a fun, like competitive thing. And you oh, use yeah. that word, you know, you had the, the thermometer piece but could you talk about that because to me it seems like it's human nature somehow to be competitive and you know which teams raise in the most and and all that yeah what did you find was that something that happened or not oh yes every year i mean it always has the potential based on how your team captains and your team the, the dna of your team is going to attack it but Absolutely. Every year. And at one cause, we talk a lot about community giving and competitive giving, and they are two beautiful sides of the same coin. Yeah. And there are reasons to come together as a community. And that's what we see with Indie Tech Gives. We know that we are like minded businesses coming together mm -hmm. to support and, and really fuel the missions of, of nonprofits that are making a difference. But to get that engine really going, many times it's the it's the competitive side of things yeah. that, like I said, will shave heads or yeah. we, had, we had teams that would bike 50 miles raising money by the mile. Um, 
one uh one of my i'm thinking of my friend kelly right now she's a yoga instructor she took over a park on the north side of indy uh the the gazebo in a little uh beautiful town called carmel and she had a yoga instruction session and whatever it is you do what you love to raise yes. funds for the nonprofits you you want to support mm -hmm. and all of that went to the competition so um you're exactly right it takes both it's that community sense yeah. and it's that competitive sense I love that you, the way you phrased that, and I love the way that you um, broke that down because it's it's really a cool and fun way to go. And I think especially since you have a truncated period of time where you're really focused in on this, this isn't like a languishing, we're going to do it for 12 months. It's oh, like yeah. a get in and get out. Um, yeah. And so it really heightens it. And I can see where um, it gets everybody, you know, jazzed up and excited to, you know, to, to nail on this. Okay. Let's talk about how corporations can benefit. Like what have you learned and what have you seen in terms of that? Everything from employee morale, you mentioned the new labor force or the younger labor force wants to know the values of support, which I'm thrilled you brought that up. Cause that's like one of my favorite things to talk about, but what are some of those anecdotal and maybe actual data driven metrics that you've learned? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm a big one on retros. So I, I went back to those first four companies in 2019. I'm like, all right, let's talk. How did this go? <laughs> Clearly, you love that you were raising money for a nonprofit. And, and maybe this will surprise some people. What got them most excited was not necessarily just that. Now, we'll come back to that. But it was the employee engagement that we just talked about. Interesting. And looking for it. And, you know, there's some pretty corny stuff out there. There's fun stuff and memorable stuff, but impactful, practically impactful employee engagement. So that was a big one. I, any, any VP, any CEO, any talent leader would tell me that engaged our employees and that's what I need to do. The second thing, and, and maybe these, these are very elementary and, and you know, you know, I'm not going to blow anybody's mind, but CSR. <laughs> It's just, it's just like that whole concept of companies want to figure a way to either expand or frankly, Julie, even begin their CSR efforts. They, they know they want to do something, but they find it difficult to do that next thing. And they're not really sure how to do this whole corporate social, social responsibility thing well. And so this just, I use the metaphor already, but forgive me, but it rolls a red carpet out yeah. for this business because it's all built and yeah. all they need to do is rally their troops. And um, even if they have a good handle on CSR, there's just nothing like taking your heartbeat of social responsibility within a business setting and linking up with not one or two or three, but I think this year we had 11 different uh, business brands yeah. involved. Well, and I think that sometimes, you know, corporate social responsibility can become a little seamy in, in terms of it can be maybe it follows the CEO or the board's, you know, thoughts on what should be supported. Mm. And it doesn't allow employees to follow their heart or their mission, right? Or their, their personal mission. And so what's so interesting about your program is that those um, beneficiaries were so varied that if you had a passion for children or the arts or yes. you know animals in nature, it allowed, it seemed like it, it allowed some diverse participation. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Now we actually had a uh, Salesforce, uh, certainly not a startup in Indy, uh, yeah. but we actually had Salesforce come at it slightly differently because their employee profile is so diverse. And they basically said, look, we're going to recommend that our charity of choice is uh, it was Hope Center Indy. Uh, and yet at the same time, while you donate to Hope Center Indy or you rally your friends and family and social networks to do that, you can also give to these other nonprofits as well. Mm -hmm. And Salesforce did this amazing match, amazing match. And um, so their employees got, got busy, not just with the company's charity of choice, Mm -hmm. but throughout the entire campaign with other nonprofits. Otherwise, uh, I encourage nonprofit or excuse me, I encourage businesses before you even select your nonprofit of choice 
Mm -hmm. Pull your employees, start that right. engagement early, get them excited about the concept and then weighing in. And then the mm -hmm. village comes together. And mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. Can you speak briefly? I mean, you mentioned the match. Could you talk about what your experience was or, or continues to be or if it's evolved about what that match does and what how strong of an incentive is it? I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I would say because it is a brief, uh, short campaign and the match therefore can be, it's, a, it's the same way that a match could be used on a giving day. And, yeah. and it really does add a multiplying effect. And so we had our CEO, you mentioned Steve uh, earlier in the, in the yeah. cast. Um, he came in uh, last year, the year prior and said, I like to introduce a match. And that match is going to last from this day to this day. And Julie, what it did is, you know, let me back up. These peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns, they always go off with a bang and they usually end with a real ramp up in fundraising. Mm -hmm. But what our software does well is really brings in matches and other contests and, and uh, programs and secondary events, uh, some like the ones I mentioned. And that helps fill out the middle where things tend to lull a little bit when it comes to fundraising. And so he comes in and he says, I want to donate or I want to give a match. I wanted to start for anybody that raises this up to this, this many times. It was the most complex thing I ever heard, um, but we got it done and it was awesome. And to answer your question, it had a fantastic effect for weeks two, three and four before we finished the campaign. Salesforce specifically, has their own match. It's a very generous one. And it, it really does uh, encourage those employees to realize that that my dollar could mean whatever that match. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, my $10 gift or my $50 raise where people are raising two, three, four hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars. And I'm like, I'm only going to raise 50 bucks, but maybe now it's a hundred. Right. So yeah, I, there's no doubt that they are uh, influencing a campaign like ours. Well, you know, it's the lesson of uh, National Public Radio and all of uh, local chapters, affiliates of, of public radio. Those those matches, you know, I listen to NPR every morning as I'm getting ready to come to the office. And there's something very compelling about that. You know, we only have 45 minutes. We only have yeah. 30 minutes, we only have, yeah. you know? And so I think it's fascinating that you have been able to weave this in. And I think it's very, very smart uh, because I like what you said. Um, and it's very true. You know, it's the kickoff and it's the end, but it's that, that bologna in the sandwich, right? It kind <laughs> so of kind of lays there and languishes. And uh, four weeks can seem like an eternity if nothing's cooking, right? And so that's super smart. I think that's an, a fabulous lesson for so many folks out there, you know, yeah, looking yeah. at, at what, what's going on and, and uh, uh, what are some of the opportunities. This has been a great, great conversation. I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. And when I first um, chatted with you, I was thinking that... Um, when I saw Indie Tech Gives, I was thinking of like independent, you mm -hmm. know, technology. And then I was like, oh, no, wait, Indianapolis. I want to call, you know, so then I was like, oh, yeah, but reframe. But I want to call out something. And in, in, in this might seem like an off the wall thing. But I've noticed since we started um, the nonprofit show um, and we started it due to the pandemic. You know, I was the the rocket scientist that was like, this is a two week gig. We'll be on and we'll be off. And, you know, now, of course, five years. But I have been so intrigued by the number of indie, um, Indianapolis tech communities and nonprofit oriented community, uh, yeah. community leaders and business leaders. And I'm wondering, since you're there on the ground and of course, one cause based in Indianapolis, what are you seeing and like how how has this happened oh well it, indianapolis and indiana uh as a whole has have just been uh dead dead on focused of first of all building business and industry but okay. knowing that if you're going to do that and do that well that technology has to be the tip of the spear 
And so there are there there are so many waves of, of progress and growth in the tech sector in Indianapolis. And it really did, it really is the pool from which an idea like this was derived and why it makes sense to, to, to uh, extend the technology campaign that, it, that Inditech is, is to the tech community first. You know, we've even thought about expanding it beyond, but to your point, there is a well, uh, uh, a lively, uh, growing technology focus. And, and many of those companies, as you said, uh, are in the nonprofit space. So yeah. it's super exciting to see that. Um, it's super exciting to have uh, a few of those pop into Indie Tech Gives, maybe a year here, a year there. Um, but overall, it is a great space to be in and a great city to be in that space. You know, it's so fascinating. I've, I've often wondered if it was because of IU's Eli Lilly School of Philanthropy, yes. if, if somehow I've got to believe there's a connecting point there as well, because, you know, the Eli Lilly School of Philanthropy um, at Indiana University is really so in so many ways they've led um, the educational focus. Uh, that we can get educated, you know, higher education surrounding the concepts and the management of philanthropy, which is shockingly a new concept. I mean, they're not, when I was going to college and there was, there was no program whatsoever available uh, to study philanthropy or to explore that as, a, as an intellectual pursuit. Um, that would then filter down into management, right? And so to think that that your community is driving so much of this, um, if I can see it from the outside, I've got to believe that you sitting there, you must be hearing about new things like every week. There's a lot going on. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. It's an exciting space. And and some of these other tech companies, and, and the, it's a whole spectrum of what they do. Yeah. And this the problems they solve, the solutions they bring to everyday life. And generosity is one piece of that. Uh, yes. But the network in Indianapolis is extremely well-connected, tight. And I think I know that that's why something like Inditech Gives has, has really worked here. Uh, mm -hmm. Word of mouth is, 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 is at the heart of why this campaign continues to grow. And I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll just add this that, what excites me now is, and I've often called it the softer side of tech. You know, it's not always earnings. It's not yeah. always, right? But it's, yeah. it's, it's coming together and fighting against human trafficking and hunger and, 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 and uh, fight for mental health and for our communities and, and for our children. And having something like Indie Tech is and certainly not the only thing in our, in our city, but it is an active force here mm -hmm. in central Indiana. And I will tell you, having asked that question back in 2019, as we began our program, it has been an absolute privilege to, to see it all unfold. Wow. Well, I have so enjoyed this. Steve Lausch, Director of Product Marketing with One Cause, but probably more important, the Managing Director of Indie Tech Gives. Um, and you can go to Indie Tech Gives and learn about their program. I think it's such a great model for in so many ways um, for other communities and anyone who's going to run a campaign, there are a lot of things that you can observe and learn about about your work. And, and shoot, if you could start this at the dawn of the pandemic and grow it and, and see success over a six year trajectory, that in itself is an endorsement for the digital aspect of fundraising. Right. I mean, if nothing else, um, that in its that is just such, I think, a a point to look at and, and observe because it's really been a, a brilliant thing and a brilliant campaign. Um, this was a lot of fun. Help me out. And, and you just finished 2024. Tell me about the cycle moving into 2025. Yes. Thank you for that. We are, uh, we'll be putting on a press release encapsulating uh, the story of 2024. That will, I believe that comes out this week. Good. And uh, in that will be the first uh, surfacing of a link that gets people to, to weigh in as to whether they want to participate as a nonprofit, whether they're a corporation who now wants to engage their employee base for good. And uh, people will be able to weigh into that. We, of course, begin our planning at the beginning of uh, 2025 and we'll be kicking off by June. 
I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, Steve Lausch, you've been a great guest. I've so enjoyed this. And I also want to say that we have amazing uh, partners with us, Bloomerang, and they're based in Indiana, right? Correct. Uh, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Fundraisers Friday, our new show on Fridays, and 180 Management Group. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so we can have conversations and get new ideas like we have uh, from Steve Lausch today. It's been a lot of fun. Steve, every day we end the show with this mantra, and, and I have to witness to you, it means different things. Um, to me and hearing the trajectory of your story and, and what you went through and what you're still navigating, um, it means something new and different to me today. But the message is this, to stay well so you can do well. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you again.